the Bahamians, July 10th, 1973, represents one of the proudest moments in our history. As a people, it signifies a moment when every Bahamian began to see in colors black, gold, and aquamarine. In this next story, our Lloyd Allen explores the role of an unsung hero, George Headley Knowles. It's hard to believe that in a few days, the Bahamas will celebrate 47 years of independence. And over the years, we've come to know many of those movers and shakers that have helped to make our country what it is. However, there remain some who are unsung heroes. And today, we meet one of them. Spending most of his days at home with his wife and grandchildren, George Headley Knoll says it was a different time back in 1967 when he first accepted the role holder of the mace. So when I first went there, I was known as the Black Rod. I would stand there, and when the speaker opened the door of the robe room, the then mace bearer there was with him. So he would nod to me, and I would take the, 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 the Black Rod and hit it on the floor and say, Mr. Speaker. Then they would proceed to the, to the chambers. I would then go and put the rod back. Noel says that job was simple. Over the years, as his responsibilities grew, so did his exposure to some of the most powerful men in the country. He recalls an episode involving parliamentarian, the late Sir Randall Fox, father of the Bahamian labor movement, and the late Sir Arlington Butler, former speaker. When Sir Randall Fox, Minister of Labor and Commerce. He started to carry on contrary one day in the assembly. So me being mace bearer after I stopped being black rod, the speaker would call me and I would walk around to the right side of the speaker. So he said to me that day, Mr. Knowles, go and say to the honorable member that I wish him to stop what he's saying in the assembly or I would name him. Noel says after some back and forth, the speaker made an unforgettable statement. When the speaker said, your name, he refused to get up. So the speaker said, Sergeant at arms, that's the police, come and take the honorable member out of the chamber. He refused to get up the chair. So they lift him up. With his briefcase, the two police officers, and all he was saying, thank you, this is what I wanted, a sweet ride. Although not a heavy hitter, Knowles attributes his deep-rooted love for country to his first-hand view of the men who helped to shape the country we call home, including the late Sir Lyndon Oscar Pinling, who he calls the greatest. Really humorous, very intelligent, very educated, and... Uh, he always thought well about his people. And although you were the opposition and you were radical, he never ever in my presence speak bad to them. He would only say, when you had the time and the privilege to do the right thing, you did not do it. That's why we are here. And I have no hate against you. Keeping a treasure chest of pictures and memories of his seven years as a public servant in Parliament, Noel says he is thankful for his experiences, which he uses to this day to inspire his children, grandchildren, and anyone who would listen, that we still live in the best country in the world. For the Morning Edition, Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News.